When I first decided that I wanted to make cloth face masks, I tried a few different patterns to see what I would like the best as far as fit and comfort were concerned. I made the face masks that Lisa had shared with us on a previous Facebook video here at Lori's. I made the pleated face masks that also have a little pocket in the back so you can add an extra layer of filtration if you wish. And then I made the simple face mask. And I've decided that my favorite is the simple face mask. So today I would like to share with you the pattern and how to make it. Hi, my name is Gail and I'd like to welcome you to How Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. This is the face mask that I've decided that is my favorite. I've made many of them. Um, all of my friends and family also chose this style that I've been making for them, even the men. So it has nose wire in it. You just put the nose wire on, form it to your nose, and then you're gonna slip the elastics over your ears. You're gonna pull the little chin part down, and there you have a very nice fitted mask. This mask with a nose piece, it touches the tops and forms nicely to your face. It's close at the chin and there's no gaping at any of the sides. It also has a lot of room on the inside so the mask isn't right up against your face. I find this one is more comfortable to wear for longer periods of time and I think for people that have problems wearing masks who find like they can't breathe, this might be a good alternative for you to try. So the pattern for this mask comes from a young lady. Her website is orange.quilts.com. She was asked by a physician in March of this year to create a surgical mask design that he could use for his staff. So she created this pattern and she calls it the simple mask. In the pattern you will get two pages of instructions and you will get two templates. One is for the main body of the mask and one is for batting. She uses batting in her masks. I can't even imagine putting batting in a mask because I think it would be much too warm. So what I've cho chosen to use is a lightweight fusible interfacing and I'm using Presto Sheer. So to make this mask, this is for an average size face. So I call it an average size woman's face. You'll need a piece of fabric that is 10 inches by 16 and a half inches. You'll need two little pieces for the sides where you put the elastic. In her pattern, she suggests one and three quarters of an inch by three and a half inches. I like making mine one and three quarters by four inches long. It just, for me, there's a little bit more to wrap around. You'll see it goes quite easy. You'll need um, a piece of fusible interfacing. What I did when I was uh, putting my pattern together, I measured on the template. You know that your fabric is 10 inches wide, so my fusible interfacing is 10 inches wide. And all I did is I measured from the bottom of the mask to the top, and it's 5 and 7 eighths of an inch. So I've just cut rectangles of fabric that are 10 inches by 5 and 7 eighths inch. It's a lot easier than having big pieces of interfacing. You'll also need two pieces of elastic. For the people and myself that I've made this size of mask for, I've been cutting my elastic at 6 and 3 quarters of an inch and it's been working really well. And you'll also need a piece of aluminum wire for the nose piece. Lori's has ordered aluminum wire and we expect it in very, very shortly. So check back with the store and you'll be able to pick up the aluminum wire for your nose pieces here. So to make this, when I, whenever I use a pattern that has templates with it, and I know I'm going to be making a lot of them, I put double-sided sticky tape on the back of my pattern and I stick it on a piece of template plastic and then I cut around it. So I have a really nice sturdy 
template now that I can keep using again and again and again and I don't have to worry about a piece of paper getting all wrinkled up. So for me this is what I've done with my templates, is put them onto template plastic so that I don't have to worry about wrecking it. So we're going to start off making our mask with our fusible interfacing. So you're going to take your fusible interfacing and you're going to take the template that says batting template. Now she's got the corners cut at the top and then little bits at the bottom. You don't have to cut these corners at the top. You're going to see in a later step in making the mask that we are going to cut these corners so you don't have to do it now. So all I do is I lay out my piece of interfacing, I put my template onto it, and then I just take my rotary cutter, which is hiding on me right now, and you can use a ruler or just freehand it, and I just cut along the edge of my template to trim off that little bit. This is the part that goes down um, in your chin area. And now your bad uh, interfacing is ready to go. So what you're going to do next is you're going to take your piece of fabric that's 10 inches by 16 and a half and you're going to fold it in half and then you're going to press it matching all the raw edges. Whenever I'm using um, a patterned fabric for this because I've made some with solid colors, I look at this now. The folded edge is going to be the edge that's up at your nose. So I look at it and I decide, do I like this little bit, you're going to be measuring down a bit, so you're going to look at about this area. Do I like the pattern on the fabric better on this side? Or do I like the pattern on the fabric better on this side? So choosing that will help you determine which part you want to be facing out because you're going to put your fusible interfacing on the piece that's going to be touching your face, so the back. So I've decided that I like this you're going to open this up, you're going to lay your fusible interfacing down and tuck it right up in the crease. Put this back down and you're going to use a hot iron to fuse it. Okay, once you've got it fused, and I already have a piece fused in here, we are going to take our template for the mask and you'll see that there's a line at the top and it's called shaping pocket. That's actually the little line that gives you a guideline of where to put your nose wire. So you just lay that down on your mask. This nose wire has a little bit of adhesive on the back so I just peel off this plastic strip and I just center it right up to the crease, just centered more or less using those little dashed lines as a guideline. Once I've got that in there, I'm going to shut this once again and you have to sew this little nose, nose piece wire in there. So I take a pin and I feel where the end of my wire is and I put a pin there and I do the same on the other side. This is so that when I'm sewing this in, I'm not going to actually sew right onto my aluminum. I know where I have to start and stop. So when I put this in under my machine, I'm going to start sewing somewhere, not at either end, somewhere in the middle. I sew all the way down. I pivot. I backstitch. Then I come forward again. Sew all the way to the other end just past my pin, I pivot, I backstitch, I come back and then I sew back down to where I started. So I've actually got a double line of stitching holding my nose wire in. Okay. So once you have your nose wire stitched in, it's going to look like this. So you have to know which is the front and which is the back. So the back is the part that's got the fusible interfacing on it. The front has nothing on it. On the back of the fabric, you are going to take your ruler and you are going to draw a stitching line. 
So for this size of mask, you're going to draw your line at two and a half inches. One of my favorite marking tools is my Bowen pencil. So I'm just going to draw a line on the back of my mask, so that's the side with the interfacing on it that will be touching my face. You're going to draw a line at two and a half inches. This line is going to be hidden, so you don't have to worry what color you're using or how dark you're pressing or anything like that. You just have to be able to see it. So now you're going to take this to the machine and you are going to stitch down this line. So once you have that done, it's going to look like this. So you've got that line stitched all the way down. You're going to take it to the iron then and you are going to enclose your drawn line. So you're going to fold it with wrong sides together and you're going to press it so that that stitching line is right on the very edge. So give that a really good press and then you're going to take it to your machine and you're just going to top stitch as close as you feel comfortable getting to that edge. Once you have that done, it's going to look like this with the top stitching done. So now you'll see that that's going to form this top edge on the mask. After you have that done, you're just going to take your fabric, open it up, put right sides together, and you are going to stitch down this long edge using a quarter inch seam. Once you've done that, it's going to look like this. So there's my quarter inch seam. Now you're going to take this piece and you're just going to turn it right sides out. It's very easy to turn and your wire doesn't get all bent up when you do it. So turn this right sides out and then you need to press that seam that you've just made. A little trick is if you lay this flat and you have your uh, seam going in either direction but just so that it's just one direction if you just finger press that all the way down now when you take it to the iron to press this you've got it right at the edge you've got that really nice fine fine line right at the edge so you're going to take this to the iron and you're going to give that a really good press once you've got that done, it's going to look like this. And just like you top stitched on this part really close to the edge, you're now going to top stitch on this part as close as you feel comfortable to the edge. Then you're going to get your template that is for the body. And you're going to lay this on here. The shaping pocket is where the nose wire is, so you want to put that where the nose wire is. And this is where you're going to be cutting off four corners. So you're just going to lay that on there, and you're going to match your seams, and you're going to take your rotary cutter, and you're going to trim the corners one at a time. There's one. three, and finally number four. So that's what it's going to look like now. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this back to the iron and you're going to have the nose piece at the top. You're going to fold up the bottom and just to do this quick and easy, you don't need to follow any of these little guidelines that are on this pattern. I just fold this bottom piece up so that there's about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the fabric and this sewn line and give this a really good press. And now it's time to form the shape of the mask. So you always start with the bottom of your mask. So we're going to take the bottom of the mask and you're going to see that you have this angle here. So I'm going to hold a pin there right at that end of that angle. And then I'm just going to fold this top piece 
fold this top piece down so that it's a continuous line going down like this and I'm going to secure it with a pin. Then you're going to take the top part that has the nose wire and you're going to fold that down. Once again I take a pin, I just put it right there at that angle to hold it and I'm just going to fold it down so that it now forms a straight line and I secure that with a pin. So I don't have to fiddle with this anymore or worry about it. I take this to my sewing machine and in less than a quarter of an inch seam, I just stitch all the way down just to hold these pieces in place. Once you have those sides done and you've got it stitched just to hold it in place on both sides, it's time to put your elastic on. So you're going to take your elastic and you're going to turn it to the right side and I've already put my, mine on. You're just going to put it, so you have about 3 8 of an inch or so from the bottom. Make your elastic meet at the raw edge and I just stick this under my machine. I shorten my stitch length and I just go back and forth a few times to really secure this elastic so there's no way that it's going to pull out from using the mask. You're going to put the one side on, then you're just going to make sure you don't twist it. You're going to put the other side down and you're going to just stitch again to secure that elastic. Just be consistent. There is no magic number how far this has to be. I just have mine up about 3 eighths of an inch or so. So you're going to secure your elastic on your mask on both sides. Once you've secured your elastic, then it's time to put these side pieces on. So you're just going to put it right sides together, make sure your elastic is out of the way, and you're just going to basically put the mask piece in the center of your little side pieces. So you have a little bit sticking out of each side, that's where you're going to turn it down. So she said in her pattern, as I said before, to make these three and a half inches long. I make mine four inches long. I like having this amount to turn over. So all you're going to do is you're going to turn that over there and you're going to start stitching. You're going to come down and then you're going to turn the bottom up and you're going to stitch this on all the way down with a quarter inch seam. I backstitch at each end making sure that I go over the elastic again to secure it. So once you get that on both sides, it's going to look like this. It'll actually look like this when you have it all sewn on. So there I've sewn it on. Looks like that. Just pull it and you're going to take this to the iron and you're going to press it. So just press this so that this is even with the bottom, even with the top edge. Same thing on this side. We'll do it on this side because I've already pressed this one. So I folded my sides in. Then you're just going to take this and you're going to fold it down about a half an inch. It's not quite meeting your seams. Then I fold it one more time over top of my sewing line. You want to make sure at this point that once you fold it, it extends past where your seam is because you're going to take this to your machine now. And I don't stitch on this end piece. I've been stitching in the ditch because my machine likes it better when I do that and my stitching is hidden. So all I do now is I take this to my machine I back stitch and I stitch all the way down, stitching in the ditch and back stitch again. You want to be sure that when you're stitching that you're getting this fabric all caught in the back. So you're going to do that to both sides and then you're going to have your mask all made. One more thing about these face masks. Like I told you, I consider these to be an average female face, which is what I consider um, myself. Uh, the men in my life, these were a little bit too small for them. So what I did is I took the pattern and I enlarged it to 108%. 
So it just made this mask just a little bit bigger for the men and it fits them really, really well. And of course, you're gonna to have to make the elastic a little bit longer too. The men in my life, the elastic worked out to be eight inches long. My sister has a very small face, so these were too big on her. So I reduced the pattern to 90% and they fit my sister perfectly. And the size of elastic that I cut for her is six and a quarter inches. I also tried um, the smaller size face mask on my eight-year-old grandson, and the smaller size works really well for him. If you have an even smaller child that you want to make it for, just take the pattern and reduce it in size. Um, I think that if I were to make uh, a mask for a five-year-old or something like that, I would probably start with reducing it to about 80% and see how it went. Um, but I know that the smaller size reduced to 90% fits my eight-year-old grandson just fine. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make this mask. I am going to be coming back and I'm going to be sharing with you a few of my favorite things, which was Lori's challenge for all of us here at the store this summer. My favorite things are some of the Studio 180 design tools and I'm excited to share them with you. Thanks for watching.